Yo, 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 what's up, Cam? Yo, what's up, Carter? What's happening? What's up, man? New day, new week, man. Blessings to everybody out there, man. Yeah, man, many blessings, man. We got a great show today, huh? Man, great show, man. If you guys don't know who this young man is on the podcast today, you better get familiar, man. What a story is this going to be, man? I'm excited for it. Me Talk too, to man. Me, me too. Man, the legendary John Bowman, a uh, Hall of Fame, CFL Hall of Famer, the sack master. Oof, boss. Hall of, uh, Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer, man. He's like CFL Hall of Fame, like professional football Hall of Fame. Not many folks get that HOF for their name. So first out. No, no first not out. a lot of them, bro. And you know. also Wingate Hall of Famer, too, as well. I had the pleasure of playing with him for a little bit, too, as well. Great guy, man. I'm uh, going to learn a lot about him today, man. But everybody, please welcome Mr. John Bowman. Introduce him for we even got started. Hold on, Kel. Let, oh, my bad. A little bit, baby. Hey, we got, got it. Hey, I got um, excited, man. How your week going, brother, man? Man, it's going good, man. There's a lot of work going on, man. And, uh, you know, it's going good. Family's healthy, man. God is good, man. How about you? Man, I'm blessed, man. Holly favorite. Can't complain, man. Uh, got a lot going on, you know, as far as work and uh, outside of that. But um, I'm What's opening up? the restaurant back up, man. I Four know. Grill. We're doing I breakfast. I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, we're shooting, shooting for April first opening, man. So if you guys are up in the morning from six o'clock to eleven o'clock, stop by and see us at uh four fifteen grill across from Purdue. We got grits, eggs, bacon, cheese, omelets. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> our bag potatoes, cake, jam, jam. Jam. great thing, man. Jam four, man. Get some good breakfast sandwiches out of there too. I'm sure. That's yes, sir. Key. Yes, sir, man. Yes, but, Lord. Um, so working on that, man, getting everything in order for that, um, high-end process and ordering food and all that stuff there, man, and getting ready to go again and try it, man. Last time it was a little rough during the pandemic, but we're going to try it again, man. Man, make sure y'all come out and support, man. I'm, 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 I know it's going to be a, a huge success, man, and a huge blessings, man, for sure, man. Love what you're doing in the community, man. Not only are you providing football, not only are you providing T-shirts, now you're feeding them. I mean, come on, Carter. Yeah, football might be might be the, the last of the last Mohegans, but um talk about that later though. But um the main purpose of the show tonight is gonna be to show this guy right here some love, man. Mr. John Bowman, man. Mr. Class John Bowman. 2023 yo. CFL Hall of Famer, man. Ain't That's that crazy? Something, ain't that something about Hall of Famer, man? Like what an accomplishment, man. What an accomplishment, man. That's a 2023 CFL Hall of Famer, man. Let's get, let's get this thing started, man. What job? He's, a great, cup, at, he's man? a great cup winner, too, by the way. Two time. Two time, time great cup winner, man. Yeah. If you don't know exactly. that, it's like the Super Bowl, right? Of, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. For sure. Um, tonight's guest of honor is none other than Mr. John Bowman. Y'all give it up. John, what's, what's happening? Up, what's happening, my boy? Big clap. Definitely happy to have you on. I appreciate you guys, man. Thanks for having me, man. I, it means a lot. You know, one thing about this Raider thing, man, it reaches so far, man. We done covered a lot of area over the past few months of just Raider greatness. And uh, we feel like you one of the guys that float under the radar but your greatness needs to be seen and shine and heard because your story is amazing, my brother. Mm -hmm. I mean, the crazy thing is, like, it's probably because I didn't play a lot at Richmond County. I mean, at Richmond Senior. Uh, I, back, I was back up tight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, I mean, we'll get into that, I'm sure, as, as, as we go through the conversation. But it's it just... I didn't start with a high pedigree, and I, I just earned. I fought for everything I got. And when I was at Richmond, I was a backup behind Sid, and we, and he he was the starting tight end. And he was getting – he probably had like 20 catches. So that tells you what the back end, backup tight end got yeah, but <laughs> when you play for a running team. so But I was the hammer, though. Anytime we ran a sweep, it was running right to Bo, right to run, running right to Bowman set. 47 and 48, Bowman's going to get that reach. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to steal that edge for you, Michael Green. 
I <laughs> 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 Mike Green, the man. Why? Well, yeah, man. Um, let's get to the story, man. That right there is amazing to be a backup tight end and go to a Hall of Fame level, man. That that speaks to your, you know, your hard work and determination, man. A lot of folks would just gave up on their dreams, but you put that work in and you he made it happen, man. So props to you for, for that, sure. man. For, for sure. sure. So let's start off, man. Where you from, man? Um, what you doing, at, man? The, the the thing is another reason why is because I probably am not a Richmond County native yeah i mean i moved to richmond county me and my twin brother moved there in like 97 96 97 went to rockingham junior high and uh, that's where i met you at john and and i didn't play football so like at the beginning like i didn't know what football was really like we watched it on tv in new york and we just thought people grew up and played football at Notre Dame. We didn't know they went to high school. <laughs> we didn't know the whole process and, and everything like that. We just thought they went to Notre Dame and they ended up in the NFL. So, you know, moving to uh, Richmond from, from, from Brooklyn was a culture shock for sure. Uh, but, you know, I mean, if it wasn't for that move, we're not having this conversation. You know, my aunt. Uh, God bless her soul. She took she took me and my twin out of a out of a tough situation and gave us a second chance. So you know, moving to Rockingham saved my life, and and I can say that honestly, knowing the fact that as soon as I left, some of my best homeboys that I, I grew up with got shot and murdered within weeks and months and years of me leaving uh, leaving Brooklyn. So. You know, moving to Rockingham was a definitely culture shock, but I appreciate it. So what part of um Brooklyn were you from? Um I say it in Best Side. So Best Side. it's not this new, it's not the new gentrified oh, yeah. version uh, of uh, Best Side. It's not the gentrified version of New York. I grew up in, you know what I mean, crack, gangs, whatever. It was it was the nineties. It was the late eighties, yeah. You know I mean, early nineties, and and it was tough, like yeah, you know I mean, to see people my mother to see other people's mothers and fathers outside doing drugs or not home or you know what i mean see children living out on the street and scrapping for food you know what i mean it, it, it was tough it, it, it that's probably where i learned you know what i mean my way like it's dog eat dog out there and that's one of the things i do remember vividly growing up in new york even though i left when i was like 12 13 I I was I was like a I was like a North Carolina seventeen eighteen years old. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I had already seen a lot by Correct. the time I, I moved to, to Richmond County. Yeah, um, my mom, mama is from Brooklyn, also my mom's, and she was oh, yeah. up there getting in trouble around the same kind of ages, and she got sent down to Rockingham too. So that's how I got here, also. <laughs> <laughs> Rockingham saved some lives. lives. Rockingham saved some lives. For sure. For sure. Go ahead, Cam. Yo, so man, talk to us about like, you know, some of the people that you felt like when you moved to Richmond County that like mentored you along the way. Or that maybe you cling to or something. Yeah, I mean, uh, so when I first got here, me and my twin, we didn't we didn't even we just kept to ourselves mo for the most part through at Rock Am. And then when we got to Richmond, uh, you know I me, mean? some guys, I don't know how they convinced me to play football. But uh, he was like, hey, hey, John, <laughs> hey, John, come play football, come play football, come hang out with the boys. And I was like, man, I ain't playing football. What the, what, what the hell is this? Uh, but James Dogan, I can say for sure. Yeah, I mean, he got me out to football practice day one in summer camp. Yeah, you know I mean, and uh, I want to say, what year was that? That was like '97. I think yeah, ninety seven was my first year at Richmond Senior High. So he was like, he got me there because Dogan actually moved to Rockingham at the same time I moved to Rockingham from. He's from Texas, so but he he grew know, up man. playing football. Yeah, he grew up playing football, and he was like, hey man, play play football. You know what I mean, Just get a brotherhood and this and that and that and this. And I was like, I'll try it, but you know, I I sucked, but I I went out because it was something new. Like my brother wasn't really into sports. He was a show from an early age. He was in the chicks and working, and that's what he did. And I had to find my path. So he still is. I, he still is. <laughs> yeah, he definitely is. Um, so I started playing football in '97, uh, 10th grade, grade at, at Richmond Senior. 
Okay. And How then, tall was you? Ten grade. I mean, I was like six foot. Like I, I was uh, around six foot, but I was small. Like I was like one sixty. Yeah, I mean, I graduated Richmond at like two hundred barely. So that's that's one of the things that held me back uh, from probably getting a better offer coming out of Richmond. But James Dogan was the man. He he, he talked me into it. And then just like when you get the thing about it is when you get to football and these four towns in Richmond County combined and you got Ellerby and Hamlet and, and, and Rockingham and, and they all get together and come to one school, then you meet the other people. You know what I mean? I've met boys from Ellerby that some of my best friends now, uh, you know what I mean, Nugget, uh, Darius McBride, you know what I mean, uh, uh, Daryl Holiday, who went to Hamlet, uh i'm and he's one he's my best friend in high school damn there so just coming there and meeting these guys and, and being a part of football and you know i owe a lot of thanks to to coach hope coach leon hope at, at uh, right. richmond senior he yeah he he he, he actually because he's the basketball coach too and just fast forward a little bit he knew i sucked at basketball so he convinced me to come back out to football whenever i quit after my 11th grade year but you know he was one of the the integral forces at the beginning of my career in football coach hoping and another guy my aau or my in uh my pickup basketball coach coach strong he actually convinced me to go back into football also because i didn't only i played richmond i played my 10th grade year and I quit my next year because I was like, it, it's, it, it hurts, man. Well, I, I, I ain't into getting hit. I ain't signed up to get hit. You know what I mean? So Coach Coach, Coach Strong and Coach Coach Hope, they, they talked me into coming back. And they was like, listen, if you want to make something, if you want to get out of Richmond County, if you want to get a scholarship to go to school or whatever, basketball ain't it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't even shoot. You know what I mean? So they, they convinced me to come back out to football and – and that was it. Not to go backwards a little bit, but um, you know, on, on this show, I love showing you know love and support to those superheroes. Um, and it sounds like your aunt Robin was one of those superheroes. So um, tell me um, how did she get to Rocket Ham? And just tell me the the other than you know saving your guys' life, man, what kind of roles you have impact on your foundations and your your morals and your and and, and the man you are today. Uh, you know, my aunt moved to Hamlet first for the, like kind of the same reasons, like New York, <clears throat> uh, early '80s. She already seen it wasn't going to be a, a good a good way to grow up or a good way to further herself. So she she moved to North Carolina by herself. You know what I mean? We talking about in. <sighs> 79 or 80, 81, she moved. She was just like, Beautiful. looked at a map and just <laughs> took the bus, <laughs> took the Greyhound down to North Carolina. And, sure. and on a whim, she landed in Hamlet, North Carolina with nobody else, no supporting so support cast or nothing. Wow. And she made a name for herself. Yeah. You know I mean, my aunt was the first person in my family to, to go to college. She got her, her associate degree and then she got a job at Owens, Illinois. <clears throat> and then what she did with the most beautiful thing she ever did was not just for me, she reached back and, and brought her two younger brothers, uh, my uncle Nelson and my uncle, my uncle Mitch, she brought them down so they can finish high school in North Carolina. They got their degree, then she shipped them back out. She was like, <laughs> <laughs> she was like job, going dude. with these headaches. Yeah, I mean, she can't deal with college boys. So and she did that for a couple members of my family. It wasn't just for me and my me and my Major twins. Art. Exactly. She was the foundation of my family. Like when when my grandma died, she took it upon herself to become the leader of the family. And she was the oldest sister. So everybody looked up to her. <clears throat> and she, unfortunately she couldn't have kids. So whenever whenever she seen what was happening to me and my twin brother, she's like, I gotta save them. Yeah, you know I mean, this is these are my two oldest nephews, and I I want them to get a, a good chance on life. And besides saving my life, she taught me everything I know. Yeah, you know I mean, from cooking, <laughs> how to talk to women, how to treat women. <laughs> you know I mean, like sure. 
work. Yeah, I mean, she before I even played football, I was working. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, like we was in, we was fourteen years old. She had us collecting like bale and hay with with some of her coworkers in the summer to teach teachers responsibilities. And she made sure I went to class. Like I didn't miss a day of school from the moment I landed in North Carolina until I graduated high school. Like not a day from from Rockingham all the way to Richmond. Sick or not, you you going to school? That yeah. that was a thing. You know what I mean? And and when I got in trouble, she she she, she I paid the price. You know, <laughs> so it it was love and just she like I don't know. She just everything she did seemed to have a point like she wouldn't she, we she didn't just beat us just to beat us because she was a, right. a, a a butthole yeah i mean she 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 proved the point she showed us what we did was right and wrong and she then she gave us a spanking yeah i mean and and you know all of those lessons that she taught me from early from rockingham about working work ethic yeah you know i mean education taking advantage of your opportunities and all of those things that that set me up for the future and 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 nothing, nothing that came at me after that was was tough. Yeah, you know I mean, because I seen it. Like she, she, she made me ready for these reasons. Yeah, man. Aunties and grandmas and and, and sisters like that, man. They were missing these days, man. They they gonna they gonna put you in your place. They gonna love, <laughs> you. They gonna love on you, and they gonna correct you when you're wrong and give you that for guidance. Sure. You know, my grandma used to tell me a lot of things when I was younger, man, and she used to stay on me about. A lot of things, and the older I get, the more I, the more I hear lessons, and the more I see it every day. So, shout out to all those grandmas. Can we, can cookies. we get a round of applause for those, yeah, for those yo. women, those matriarchs, man? Can yo. we please get that for? Us? for sure, absolutely, yo. And 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 lastly, like my house was, and a lot of people don't know, but my house was the party spot. Like my aunt didn't let me and my twin brother school work practice home like that was it one on hanging out like i i ain't go to a bowling alley go to a skating <laughs> rink I people was going to parties i couldn't do nothing but my house like my aunt she stayed in a nice neighborhood we had a pool whatever and she treated all of my teammates all of my boys like they were her kids she's like oh i was like hey can me and daryl do this this weekend or yeah you know i mean she's like oh no but y'all can do it here. Like he can't do it. Okay, watch out. His house. Uh, my mama. You can do it under my roof. For sure. Everybody just came over. We used to have pool parties in the summer, barbecue, grill out, hang out. And she let us get our space within the house, but everything we did was it, it had to be at the house. But she treated everybody <laughs> respectfully. She treated everybody like there's kids. And we ate, we ate good, we chilled, we we played the Sega Genesis. We had the Sega channel. We played it from, from day to night and everything. That's right. what's up, man. That's dope, bro. That's One dope, more thing man. I'm get, for, 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 like Kevin, go ahead, man. Because, you know, I grew up, you know, by myself. You know, um, my sister came in the world 10 years after I was born. So it was basically me out here, you know, trying to find my way. You know what I mean? Um, How was it growing up with a twin that has somebody right <laughs> beside you? And every move you make, you know what I mean? And just, just somebody in life to grow up with and learn things with. How was that, man? It, it was good and bad. Like, <laughs> first of all, if you know my brother, we you guys know my brother, we look nothing alike. Like, yeah. we look like maybe <laughs> second cousins. But everybody, we used to have to dress alike. I mean, we got introduced as the boys. We had no <laughs> individual, we had no individual personality until we got to high school when he realized what he wanted to do and I realized what I wanted to do. But it was, it's actually a blessing because like you say, you're never alone. Yeah, you know I mean, everything I went through, he went through. Yeah, you know I mean, we learned, we learned a lot. Like I always had somebody to talk to or to to fight. Yeah, you know I mean, or to yeah, you know I mean, to have my back. Like when right. whenever I needed something or I needed some help or whatever, he was there, and vice versa. And, and it's wild, it's wild thinking about it now. But yeah, you know I mean, every day for eighteen years, you see the same. Like wherever I was he went and wherever he went i went it was no day until we graduated richmond senior where we weren't up together like it's, it, we never went a day without seeing each other and it's wild to think but when he went to the army um i want to say in 2000 i think he got he got 
shipped down to South Carolina. That was the first couple of days I had to myself. I had my room to myself. I was chilling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was good. It was it was it was dope having just having a, a homeboy you can you can you can talk to him, go through the same situation. Where, where? That's that's dope, my man. That's dope. Um, you know, shout out again, man, to the Matriarchs, man. Shout out to your for, sure. for sure, bro. Um, I love seeing how that just like continue to polish, man, because you know the respect and the time that that generation put into us, right? And then the discipline, it's just good seeing how much we appreciate it as we've gotten older for sure. each other way. So, so, you know, when we try to parent or we chastise our children, man, they grow to appreciate it later, even they don't understand it now, man. So it's a beautiful thing. Um, and, uh, God bless you guys. Yeah, I mean, you, you treat them kids right. We we saw it. <laughs> we ain't feel like that. <laughs> yeah. We ain't it's, feel it's like that, man. But it's a different era. Like, you can't, like, listen, you can't get whooped like you got whooped back in our days. You be locked I, I up. I remember going, but I my first couple of months at Rockingham, and I seen some kid get beat with a paddle, and I was in my, and I grew up in New York. I'm like, ain't no teacher hit me with no damn paddle. <laughs> Can you imagine now? You know what yeah, I mean, at Rockingham, if you got beat with a paddle, it, it was just a different era, and those lessons carry it over. And you guys are grown. You guys got beautiful kids. And we're older now, but you can't discipline kids the way we were yeah. disciplined. And that's why the, I ain't gonna say this generation is is messed up, but they it get is. a it's a lot more stuff that's happening now that wasn't happening then, and and, and, sure. and it's Evan. I don't, I can't say beating kids is a is a reason, but it was just the discipline error. Like it was new ways to get beat. When I moved to North Carolina, I found out. In different ways. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> oh man. Hey, so so check this out, John. So you go through Richmond. What is it like the first time you walk on the football field to play football? And he's like, and you're at high school. And you at D high school in North Carolina. Yeah, D high you school. ain't picked up a football yet? Like, how's that going? It was it was crazy. Like I can tell you the locker room, I'm looking at people putting on pads. Like I, I put my butt pad in the front. Cause I was like, I'm, I'm protecting my Johnson primary, and then I don't know who it was, but somebody. And I'm just looking at hip pads, cause hip pads back in the day was like three yeah. feet tall. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm looking at, I don't know where to put this. Where do you put this? And so I'm watching everybody, and I, somebody pulled me to the side and helped me get it together. But I had a single bar in the front of my body. Like, I've got a man. picture over somewhere. I had a single bar in the front of my face mask. And then my first position was safety. And they were just like, just put him out, out there somewhere. So they had me a safety like day one. I was getting routed up. I didn't know what was happening. I was grabbing, falling, whatever. <laughs> And then uh, I think by the like day three, they moved me to tight end. They just like showed me how to block and how to step and yeah, you know I mean how to coordinate with others. Because one thing they knew, I think my coach at the time was Coach Henson, but they they, they knew I was tough. Like they was like, "Listen, you a tough dude. Now you don't know what you're doing, but you're going to go hard." And so they moved me to tight end. And it was it took a while, and I didn't play. Like they, I didn't step on the field until like probably the third quarter when it was like 40 something to nothing oh, wow, time. and then when, when i was in jv and games we, i would go games without playing because i know we i remember we lost to like scotland we lost a couple games in jv and uh I, so those games i didn't even play so it was probably games like blowouts i got in but i didn't i didn't play much at all but it was wild it was like if you just <laughs> see me in the locker room i want my boxers underneath my girdle I wouldn't shower. Like, I didn't know what was going on. You know? <laughs> Seeing people dip for the first time. I'm like, we're in, like, we was in like high school and this dude's got chewing. And it, it was just mind blowing. <laughs> 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 dude, but when you, when you, when you go fast forward, because I know you didn't play your junior year, but when you go to 99 year, I mean, like, you're like a part of, like, you are a part of the, the the game plan. You are a part of the offense. You know because you know we you know talking about uh, you and Pratt sharing time together. And you backed up, said Pratt. But you know when it was time to get those, you know, what I'm saying that that run play or that forty seven, that forty eight, and that sweep or whatever it is, like Put you knew in. exactly 
Yeah, it put you in. Like, it, it's going to Bowman's side, right? So, like, how did that even just transpire? Did you just, like, something click in your head at one point? Where I think I, I got shot up to, sense? like, I think I shot up to, like, 6'2", and by my senior year, or 6'1", or whatever, and I, yeah, I mean, I probably got it to, like, 175. But, like I told you, like, it would, no matter what happened, I had, like, I was, I had, like, I was a dog. Like, I didn't care what, like, you know how, like, you, you got to put, teach people to play tough. Effort. Like, I was already tough. Yeah, so, like, it was just, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't coordinated. I didn't know the steps or whatever. So, like, the, my 11th grade year when I was chilling and, uh, like, I watched football. Like, I went to games. I seen what was happening. And I, and I knew I was going to play tight end. And once they convinced me to, to come back again, like, it wasn't film like it is now. But you, you watch some tape and you see how things go. And it was just like it picked up. It came so quick. Like once I got my coordination down, it was it. Like I was the starter. Only time like I wasn't in the game was it was a definite pass situation. It was third and long. I'm not in the game. Yeah, you know I mean, but like first ten second and short, I'm in the Absolutely. game. I was starting tight end. Yeah. And but say it got all the passes. I think I got one catch for like 17 yards, and I went up and got it too. Uh, but, the ball uh, board. <laughs> hey, listen, I remember that day like it was like <laughs> 17 yards. I caught it at like seven and I ripped off a nice little run. And I would have got if Antonio Goo would have blocked somebody, I probably would have took it to the house. <laughs> but no, I, like you said, it just clicked. And like I figured out how to step, I figured out aiming points. And and it was high school, so won't nobody like like real beasts. Like you already knew, like they they going to North Carolina or whatever. Like you ain't going to mess with nobody. You want nobody going out beast me. So, um, nah. and, and that was it. Like I got it together, and and I ended up doing good. Like basically, I only played one year, and I had got a scholarship after that. Yeah, Bowman, I think. Tell us how you got recruited. Like, oh, was... hold on one second, one second. <laughs> Bowman, I think one of the best games I ever saw you play uh, well, was two games that I thought that you uh, you 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 really like killed it on. Right, uh, Anson County. Right. Oh, yeah. Yep. That Anson County game was crazy, and I think that yeah. everything went through like you, Holiday, and Ames at that point. And that game, <laughs> right. That, that, that left side was crazy. That left side went bananas, right? <laughs> and then, um, and then that Crest game, it Crest was. And I remember was Coach was crazy. saying. Bowman in. Where's Bowman? I remember <laughs> Chris, like, Chris was like 53, 52. That was a triple overtime. It was. Like, that game was but crazy. I, I remember but, Hart was like, Bowman, Bowman, Bowman. Or something like that. <laughs> God, whatever it was, right? You know what I'm saying? And it was like every time it was this combo with you and Nugget and uh, the left side of that old line, it was like yeah. un. <laughs> Real unstoppable as far as like marching up and down the field, it was crazy. And they had put this little motion package in too, as well, from uh, the tight ends, like going in motion just a little bit. Yeah, and then put your hand back in the dirt. I mean, I remember you just going nuts in that game, though. I remember that. That, that was the fun, like to this day. Like, I don't remember much about playing NASCAR, but that game was crazy. First of all, the, the game was crazy, but like, I really was like, I wish I had tape, I was working. <laughs> Like for a dude with no catches, like putting people on their back, like <laughs> pulling and looping and running tech schemes with me and Holiday. Yeah. Like I, I probably had the most pancakes I had in my life in that game. You went nuts. But it was I a remember. great game. Because I remember uh, being on the side, like like he's gonna get the he's gonna get the kick. I don't know what it was, but because I, I can't imagine tight end kick. But I remember saying he's gonna get the kick. I don't know if he's the DN. I don't I remember the, the, I don't remember the exact play. But I remember the scheme, and I, I just remember, like, Holiday would pull out, and I would fold in behind and lead up to the backer, and it, it, that was a wrap. Like, Every follow time. me, Michael Green. Let's You're go. Right. <laughs> that, game game. Was, that game was bananas. That is probably what led up to <laughs> you getting recruited, you know what I mean, and, and Wingate. So no doubt was- about it. And just to speak just before John was about to say, like <clears> – <throat> I, I probably they probably didn't want me, but when they seen film, when they see Michael Green, who got recruited by like Notre Dame and UNC and all these big schools, Lock when they ball. see him pulling up the the left side, they seen the edge getting sealed, and they seen eighty eight every time if they yeah. see eighty eight folding up the middle 
if they see 88, you know what I mean, going on a down block, they're like, oh, okay. And then they 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 come back and they they recruit obviously they recruit Holiday and Ames and those guys first and then they be like, hey, you by the way, come come sitting in on this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember Coach Barnes vividly pulling me into his to his office and he was like, Bo, you probably gonna get a full scholarship or whatever. And you probably like he said if I would have played more like my whole career. Mm-hmm. I'd probably be like going D one, but the fact that I'm playing like year. really one year, that knowing what I was doing, he's like, you're probably gonna get an offer to go D two, and he gave me like, they would call you down to the office like Catabo or um, Wingate and all the all the SAC conference schools, and then Fayetteville State and all of these schools. But my aunt already said I wasn't playing at a black school. So oh, <laughs> she, no. cut, she cut that out quick. Boy, she going to everyone. There might have been no CFL, baby. Let me tell you. She she everyone. I didn't care Woo. what was happening. She, my aunt didn't even know about football or she know about school. schools or really or nothing. But she was like, hey, I don't care where you go. Like, I don't care. You ain't going to black school. And <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> but no. But it was just wild. Like, are you sitting in these meetings? Are you sit in the office? And they were like, hey, man, like, you didn't play a lot, but we like what you did on this plays and these kind of actions. And some schools was like, oh, you, we can see you playing defensive end. And, or one school was like, hey, we can see you putting some weight and you moving the O-line and things like that. But um, it really, like, I, it was just, uh, it just happened because, like, our team, our, first of all, our school was good. I mean, we had one like two and three years back to back, and then we had one. We had lost my senior year to AC Reynolds, but uh, that's how it happened. A lot of eyeballs on the school. <laughs> it was a, like that's like this, the the legends that came through Richmond County. Is it goes on and on. Yeah, I mean the amount. I want to say like the year before they won. It had probably had like ten plus people that played Division One football from the from the ninety nine team. For sure. For sure. Um, was there any teacher at the school that showed us uh, like a like an interest in you to help you lo- uh, along the way? Um, I mean, or coach. Cra- I mean, first of all, Coach Hope. Yeah, you know I mean, but all at Richmond, all the teachers were solid. Like, um, Miss Miss Duffy. I think her name, her last name is Duffy or Duff. I can't remember. She forgive me. Yeah, she's on my Facebook. Miss Susan, Hudson. Uh, Miss Hudson, Susan Hudson. Hudson. Yeah, Miss Hudson. Yeah, but she was dope, of course. Miss Hudson, she, yeah. Yeah, but all of the teachers there wanted you to do good. It's like I was already like I was a straight A student, so <laughs> my aunt didn't play that. Like I tell you, like some people got away with my aunt didn't play. She ain't played nothing below a, a, a minus. So it wasn't like I never had to get motivated to go to class. And like I told you, I didn't miss class. So, but all of the teachers were positive, man. And all of them really wanted people to succeed. And so like when it comes to the class aspect, I mean, like I can't, Coach N. Twistle was solid. He was a dude, he was my dude for science class and all that. Uh, and I mean, rest in peace to him. But he was a good, he was a good, he was a good person. But all of the teachers, so it'd be, it'd be, it, I'd be a, a a a real dummy if I single out one specific teacher because I didn't struggle in class. But all of them, all always, I can remember. I don't remember one teacher saying, "Oh, you a dummy," or you know what I mean, anything negative. So like, I want all of them to give them all their props. I I too love Miss Hudson. Hudson. Biggest high school crush. Biggest high school crush. Miss Hudson. Miss <laughs> Hudson. Crush on Miss Hudson, she, boy. She probably. I, I ain't going. I ain't going. Listen. She's still doing the thing too. I ain't, I ain't yeah. I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> I, remember, I do remember him in high school like, dang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right there, oh, there she goes. Oh, and that she was on. My bad, Miss Hudson. Oh, no, 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 no. Not me, Miss Hudson. It wasn't me. I know who watched you. Never know who watched you. My bad. My bad. <laughs> 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 
Oh, here we are. I'm glad my face can't turn red. She's just a she great is a great teacher. teacher. Great teacher. Everyone <laughs> Absolutely. Everyone my bad. <laughs> my bad. I don't know what to say here. <laughs> I'm 40. I had to get it out at some point. All right, here you go. <laughs> Norm, Norm is like Miss Hudson. Yo. Yeah. We can't let that. We, I mean, I know I know we old now, but we can't let some, – some stuff got to stay in the back. Like, if she wasn't my Facebook friend, I'd probably say something, but no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, too so funny. Yeah. Moving forward, how was it Wingate? Like, how did Wingate get you, man? Talk to me. The, well, one was because Dogan was going, and Dogan had a car, and I didn't. But <laughs> <laughs> um, no, like it was close to home. Like it's on seventy four. Like it's literally on the same highway. As going as 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 my house, like my my, you guys knew where I stayed at growing up, and it was off seventy four, so it was like one road to get home. It was easy <laughs> transportation for my aunt. I can get I can get yeah, I mean I can get some food. I can get laundry and stuff done. Okay, I'm just seeing I'm seeing what she's saying, but no, and and, and, and like yeah, I just wanted to be close to home. Like I like I was still new new ish to Rockingham and I didn't want to go too far away like guys going to Catawba and all this in Salisbury and I was like I, I, like we went on a recruiting trip I was like nah Salisbury was it, it looked dangerous <laughs> it, it wound up being rest in peace uh yeah. some Frank Long hey, rest in peace yeah. hey, hey Kev you got some kind of, kind of sound in your background yeah it's, it's pouring out here my bad go ahead right in. okay gotcha 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 all right um I have a question here to say, ask him about South Hamlet days from Norman. Oh, I need way down there, South Hamlet. My uncle stayed in South Hamlet. So yeah, we used to go down there and hoop and just rough house like we was kids. And there was actually a girl over there I used to go kiss in the corner. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was it was fun. Like I didn't like I'm gonna tell you the truth, I didn't know South Hamlet was the hood. Like apparently it was the hood, but like I just went down there because my uncle stayed there, and we said they had a little basketball court, and we still got there and just play basketball, play pick them up and bust them. Uh, I, that's probably my first football action was in South Hamlet playing pick them up and bust them. Pick them up, bust them. Yeah, long yeah. Time. Classic for the game. Long time. And listen, when they ask on the internet, what is the game called when the ball gets thrown up? Yeah. And one guy get it, he got dodge everybody. We called the pick them up and bust. Pick them up, bust them down here. Yeah, what we call it right too. But yeah, that's that was South Hamlet. Like, crazy. Like I can go. We can throw a whole hour and a half on South Hamlet by itself. But we ain't got that. Let me South Hamlet, man. I don't like that. <laughs> Let me skip South Hamlet. Those are the days I want to know about. <laughs> but South Hamlet was, South Hamlet was fun. It was fun. Like, but that was, and that was like my aunt used to drop us off in the summer. Like. My aunt was working, and we was out of school, and we didn't play football at the time, or whatever. So she's like, "Hey, y'all going with your uncle? I don't want to see y'all until the summer, the summer over," and, and that was it. Yeah, so South Hamlet created a lot, a lot of players, man. It, it seems it like did. on those courts and little fields and whatnot. Yeah, man, it's beautiful, the, man. The it really took to a village. Georgia, a couple of guys that went to George UGA was from South Hamlet. Uh, I can't, I can't even think of his name right now. Uh, we play quarterback Jamar Bryant, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamar, I remember me and Jamar, like I used to dunk on him in the little court down there. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a butter, what was it, butter something park, butter drive? I can't, I don't know, butter scotch that drive. Was, in South that Alabama. was that was way too many hits ago to remember that. <laughs> so, oh yeah, Wingate because James Dogan got a call. It is a one way, one way shot. To get the Wingate, yeah. man. Um, was Wingate a different, like a culture shot from from the county, or how was that Wingate? Well, yeah. well first of all, it was only black people at Wingate played football, and so that that culture, like when you go on recruiting trips, you go to school. Home of Randy Travis. Home of Randy Travis. <laughs> and, and that little crooked politician. But um, you go to these schools, they take you, you hang out with the with the folks. So, I mean, you don't really see everything. 
Mm-hmm. Man, we get there that summer. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the hell did I sign up for? I mean, and we get there. That I'm playing tight end, but we in a five spread wide. So, like, I'm a fish out of water. And, uh, like, my first year at, at Wingate was tough. Like, I almost quit playing. I mean, we were like one in a one in ten, and we won like the 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 second game of the season. So we went on like a ten game, like we weren't losing. We was losing by like forty, and <laughs> and, I, and the first game, actually, we lost the first game, and the dude was like, "John, why are you crying?" I'm like, "Bro, we we lost." And he's like, "Yeah, no, nah, we good. We got we got another one." Like, and then the one, the, the older guys, he's like, oh, he went to Richmond. He, he don't know. <laughs> Definitely culture shock, but, like, when you go through the city of Wingate or the town, little town of Wingate, it's really, it's the hood, too. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's just a predominantly here. white school slap dead in the middle of the hood. Yeah, I mean, shout out to the girl that worked McDonald's. They used to give us the discount. But um, it, it, was, it, was, it was definitely a culture shock. And, and again, my first year was rough. And I'm, I actually almost failed out, flunked out. But wow. Uh, my first, when you, listen. I'm T1 I was, down. I'm T1 down. My aunt, my aunt oh, bro, me too. My, my first year. <laughs> my, my, academic, my aunt, academic probation, baby. Here we come. Academic probation. <laughs> <laughs> kept us in the house every day in high school. Every day. So I get to Wingate. My first Free. taste of freedom. Free. And Charlotte is only like 30, 35 minutes away. <laughs> and you get your homeboys. You get your new crew or whatever. And they got cars. And so, like, we freshmen, and we going up to John C. Smith and we're going to the whatever to the ones you couldn't go. The ones yeah, you couldn't go to. Exactly. <laughs> like, okay, like, I still they, made they it to the schools. They probably thought I went to John C. Smith because the amount of times I was there. <laughs> but no, I had to, I had a little I had a little trouble my first year, but I I, I tightened up. I tightened up big time. You Hall of Famer at Wingate too, though, right? Yeah, like like I said, so after my first year, I got used to it. I think like by game three, they switched me to defensive end, and they was like, "Listen, he ain't no out, he ain't no outside wide, he's no spread offense wide. Let's move him to def- <coughs> defensive end." So it was probably like three games where I played both sides of the ball, and then they was like, "Just leave him at defensive end," and that was it. Like like I was fun was had to be the end. This- I actually wanted to play DN at Richmond. Uh, damn you, James Dogan! If you're watching this, you screwed me. But you know what I mean. Um, I, I didn't get a chance. So when I got to play defensive end, there was no more structure. And they was like, "Hey, go forward, just hit people and run people yeah. over." I was like, "That's it. That's the football I wanted to play." So <laughs> yeah, I mean, first year, like I, I probably didn't have no stats or whatever. By the by, by my second year. It was like five sacks, then seven sacks, and then by my senior year, I had like seventeen and a half or something like that. So how are we looking size wise? Went crazy. <laughs> I, I did go crazy. I mean, I was small, but I was quick. Like, and I was like, I was probably six two. I probably like two fifteen at the time, but I was fast and I was I had good hips and I was nimble, whatever, whatever. And and like it was just it was playing aggressive, like. We didn't go backwards, so it's just go forward, go left, go right. Yeah, I mean, we had those, no, we had no fire zones. We had to drop off in the skiff or anything like that. So <laughs> it was, it was fun. Like after my first year, I wanted to quit, but when I got moved to defensive end, it was like, okay, it became fun again. Exactly. Hey. Like we still sucked. Like we, we still, <laughs> we still winning four or five games, but like it was fun and and like. It was just good. And playing defensive end it was like my natural position. Name some of the guys you played with in college. Guys uh, from Richmond or no, just no, period. period, period, period. You know what? Yeah, yeah. When y'all had the when y'all was talking about the West Charlotte game uh-huh. on the uh not too long ago, one of my one of my teammates was the guy who cut the seventy yard pass with Shard Hair. And he played at West Charlotte and he was like he was a beast. He was like animal animal I, I, I was like hey how the hell you end up at at wingate 
and he's like, oh, man, blah, 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 academic. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, if, if I ever played with, like, a guy, I was like, oh, he's way better than anybody I've ever seen, it was probably him. But, like, a lot of guys, like Lucas Green, Erie Williams, of course, James Dogan. Um, and surprisingly, like, we had a couple guys go to the NFL. David Jones, he ended up getting drafted to the Cincinnati Bengals. I think he was a freshman. He was a freshman my senior year. Kim Cummins, uh, he got drafted to by the Dallas Cowboys, and they got traded to the Jets. Yeah. yeah, so we had a couple guys that ended up after me. I thought I, I paved the way. Paved you know the mean? way. <laughs> How did we build? <laughs> we had a couple guys that, that ended up playing in the, in, in the field. Okay, so um, what was your major in college, man? <laughs> the first one or the second one? The, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, first of all, I went. I was like, oh, I'm a major in PE because you know I mean, I wanted to be a teacher, and I was like, PE is easy. easy. It's not. What did your aunt have to say about that? Was your aunt cool she, with she that? She didn't care. She was just like, as long as you do something. Like, sure. She didn't okay. care what was happening. But, like, PE is the hardest major I've ever seen in my life because like, I, don't, I can't say the job is easy, but it's not. Yeah, you know I mean, it's different. But you got to learn all the ologies. You know I mean, biology, kinesiology, yeah. physiology. And I'm like, you know what? I didn't get this I, I just want to, I just want to like, <laughs> coach. <laughs> you want to get I want to blow my world too. I want to coach. You know I mean, that's what I wanted to do. But, you know what I mean? So that was, that was wild. So after I told you I had academic probation, I switched my major second semester like i was like you know what i'm going to market it so i actually I went, I went to business marketing and uh -huh. like business marketing was great like like i, I really as i found out you know what i mean life or whatever i wanted to get into doing commercials and advertisement and, and selling products and i didn't care what it was that's, that's what i wanted to do mm -hmm. so i ended up becoming a business marketing major and that's actually what i thought i, was, I took an internship my senior year I was like, okay, after I graduate, I'm going to go in to work for Lays and blah, blah, blah. And that's what I was going to do. But, you know what I mean, just so happened, like, I had a crazy year that year. And um, I got some some looks. But, yeah, marketing. I can't what say was it's your easy, but it is easier than PE. What was your first look? What was the first uh, call that you got when you uh... – we right before you left college, you're going into that spring. So I, I already knew I wasn't going to like be drafted or anything like that. But I mean, 17 and a half sacks, like I was third in the country and I was like first in the country in tackle. I think I had like 33 tackles for loss. And this is all my senior year. So I had I my stats, out. 70 Was tackles, you all something that year? 33 tackles for loss, 17 and a half sacks. I was killing. I thought I was going to get, like, I went to some all-star games, whatever, so I thought I was going, you know what I mean, get called. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so my buddy Erie, my buddy Erie Williams, he got me to play indoor football. He's like, listen, you probably, like, if nothing, if you don't go to no NFL tryouts or whatever like that, you should come play, come come with me, come, come play football in, in Florida. And I was like, man, I ain't playing no indoor football. He's like, bro, it's just like arena. This is when the arena was cool. Like arena, if you played arena back then, you was making yeah. 100, yeah. 200, whatever. Uh, yeah. whatever you made. You was making bread. The Warren Georgia was Force, made. the Georgia Force was going real strong then. Exactly. And, yeah. And, and he was like, hey, man, come with me to Florida. Like, are you quick? Like, you going to get a shot to play arena one if you come with me. So he he, 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 he finagled me. He got me to, to play football again and – this is like 05. We went to Daytona. What was Auntie Beach. saying about you going in there, Florida, to play some indoor My football? Auntie was actually pissed because <laughs> I hadn't graduated yet. Oh. Like, because arena started in spring, and I needed one more class to graduate. It. And I and I promised her, I was like, on Raven, I swear to God, I will go back to school and get my one class, and I'll be right back. You know what right I mean? Back. And she was like, and so uh, – like me and her, I had told I talked to Coach Wright, uh, my my football coach. Actually, my football coach is the younger brother of Frank Wright, who was I guess he coached the Panthers or something like that and got fired after one year. 
So me, her, and him had a talk, and he was like, yeah. And the Eagles when they went to the Super Bowl. But and the ahead. Eagles when they went to the Super Bowl. And he actually played, he won some, went to the Super Bowl a couple of times. Bills. Yeah, the Bills. Yeah. And, yeah, and he was like, and he was like, yeah, if John want to come back to school after, after his spring fling in, in Florida, he can come be on the coaching staff and finish his last class. So I went to Florida. Bald, of course, a arena two or whatever it was, and then it was a, it was on fire after that. And what then I went to. Was you at? I was in Daytona Beach. I never got called up to arena one, but like, I got, it was it was like it was close. You say arena one, so it's like D one and yeah, it was yeah, just it was, like it, it was, was like tears. a little league, like a little feeder league to to arena players. You know what I mean. And then, so after after playing that that season in Daytona, I went back to Wingate. Uh, I was assistant coach, whatever. Blah blah. I was really the the do boy. <laughs> and then that next spring, some dude who was like part owner of the Georgia Force, and but he had a little small team in Rome, Georgia. I mean, my, it was crazy, bro. I was everywhere playing football. I surviving so, off of this. <laughs> I was tired. You? <laughs> Yeah, they was paying. Yeah, we got paid like, I uh, like four hundred a week or something like that. Okay. But then back then, back then a little bit that tight. was a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> and then sure. they was playing. They was paying like your house, correct? And you was getting food. And then you got we got like coupons to restaurants and stuff like that. But then this guy own. He's like part owner of the Georgia Force or helped sort loads or something like that. And he had a little team in Rome, Georgia. And he's like, hey man, come play in Rome. I'll get you to the Georgia Force in a couple weeks. Uh, so I was like, I always wanted to play like arena because like they got paid and whatever. So I was like, yeah, I'll come play in Rome. And first of all, guys, don't go down to Rome, Georgia. <laughs> y'all see this? Y'all see that, that 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 lady on TV yelling all the time? The little politician, what's her name? Marjorie Marjorie. Taylor, whatever her name is, yeah. she from there. <laughs> so, <laughs> this town, it's too funny, yo. Oh, my bad. Floyd, funny. County, Floyd County was, God bless him, but it was bad. <laughs> so, long story short, he never called me up to the Georgia Force. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's number one on the hit list. But, like, halfway through that season, like, I already had, like, 15 sacks. And we're playing arena. It's hard to get sacks. It and is. It's quick. It's a quick up. game. Exactly. So I probably had like 15. I was killing. And I had some rushing touchdowns. I was playing uh -oh. both ways. Yeah, I was playing. I was, I was, I was, they was, they were getting their money out of me. And then, uh, like, I want to say by like week, right before the playoffs, the Montreal Alouettes called me and, uh, they was like, hey, man, come to Canada. And I was like, nah, I'm not living in an igloo. This is crazy. I didn't crazy. find your way down there in Rome, 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 Georgia. <laughs> Hold on. <It's> an igloo. <laughs> this is how crazy we are. I grew up in North Carolina. I didn't know where Canada was. I was not living in no igloo. That was the last and the dude, the dude was laughing. He was like, nah, bro, it's, it's a city. And I was like. So I looked it up and it was cool. And I'm actually one of my teammates in Rome, they called him too because he already played in the NFL. They wanted to bring him back. And so they was looking at film of him and they was like, who's this dude balling? Same you. how I got, same way I got. Hey, hey, dollars. hey, kids, if y'all listening out here, man, if somebody coming to watch the star, you need to turn up. <laughs> you better be working. You better turn up. But they're going to see Listen. you doing your thing too. I'm taking back to everybody. <laughs> I got the college. I got, yeah, I mean, I got the CFL. So they're watching our quarterback, and it's like, oh, this defensive end right here is hooping. Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so they got me to Canada. I and I'm gonna tell y'all, like, my first day getting on the plane. This is actually my first time flying. Wow. This is like, this is what year was this? This is oh six. So like. Ain't internet had really just started becoming a thing then. So it was not like it was like five years ago. So it was my first time flying and I'm going to Canada and I get on the plane. I have a big like a triple goose. I got my Tim's, I got my jeans. <clears throat> and this is this is in May, June. So I'm like, I get to the airport and there's people that with shorts. 
thong flip flops, and yeah. they like. I'm like, where the hell y'all going? What part of Canada y'all going to? Where the igloos at? <laughs> I'm like, bro, we're about to go be in the snow. Man, I get off that plane. It's like 92 and sunny. I, and it's only like a two and a half hour flight. I'm thinking it was like a, a <laughs> 10 hour flight. I don't know. I, I ain't know how planes work. Yeah, I just knew I'm at the bottom. I'm in Georgia. I'm in Atlanta. <laughs> And they in Canada, they far up. So I'm thinking this is a long ass flight. Let me let me let me barrel down. But it ended up being cool. You know what I mean, two hour flight, and I was hot the whole time. And of course, like I was in the middle seat, <laughs> 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 row thirty. You know what I mean, something like that. <laughs> how was it? How was your first time stepping on that field out there, though, man? Because you know, CFL L rules is a little bit different and stuff, but. Oh, uh, how was the first day you stepped on that field? What was it? What was it well, like? I mean, first, there's a lot of stuff I ain't know about to see. We're like, we're a yard off the ball. It's an extra dude. And they, like, I was used running. to you know, running and around and stuff like that because the same motion as arena. And the field yeah. is like 20 yards wider, 20 yards longer, 30 yards longer, and 15 yards wider. So, like, and then I'm coming from arena. So I was. Yes. <laughs> bro, I'm more like, running guys down. Hey, I was tired, but and I had just got finished playing ten games in arena, so I get up there. It's training camp, so I'm over. I've been playing since March, and this is May, June, and they was like, "All right, we got it's eighteen game season." You got two preseason games, and I'm a rookie, so you playing all the preseason games. And it was it was tough. Like my first my listen, my legs were shaking. I, my muscles was done. So training you, camp, I don't know. Like only reason I got up every day and practice is because, like I was telling you earlier, it's like my mentality was different. But I used to go to bed like right after we had at the meetings for all like eight o'clock. I used to go lay down because I couldn't walk. Like, my legs were so fatigued. I just played a full season of arena. I mean, and I'm in training camp and running and special teams and just walking around, getting from point A to point B. It was tough. So but did you have again, to make the team? Or you, I had all that. For sure I had to make the team. Yeah. Listen, so the crazy thing is they had a dude who was just like <clears throat> one rookie of the year, the year before. And they just traded for him, so he was the starter. And they had another dude named Anwar Stewart who ended up being my my homie. Like I was the best man at his wedding, and everything. Like he he was coming off of just like two years ago winning Defensive Player of the Year. Wow. And so and they bring in they bring in like ten defensive ends, eleven defensive ends, <clears throat> and I'm <laughs> I'm at the bottom of the list. So like <laughs> I, I I was like Group D, Group D or E. Out, it would fluctuate between the day and you probably get like two reps at practice like two practice reps but you had like the special teams drills kickoff kickoff return punt punt return all of that and that's where i shine like uh, sizing people up you know what i mean i was always in my right spot you know what i mean doing whatever i had to do and i'll never forget like two days three days into camp <laughs> They cut the dude who won rookie of the year. And I was like, <laughs> exactly. Here we go. What about me? I was like, what the hell is going on? You know what I mean? And then, like that week, you see your reps start going up, going up, going up. Then we get to the preseason game, like had a couple sacks or whatever. I mean, but I'm still on the fringe because you, because the CFL, you only get to keep for it's only 44 people who dress for games nfl is like 55 60 whatever cfl is only 44. so like you gotta make your hay so we i had a couple of sacks but they was like listen you had some sacks but your special teams is trash so i don't care what you think you're gonna happen you better play special teams better and so whatever i geared up for special teams and then this is like the day two days before the last preseason game the starting defensive tackle gets hurt. And he's like, oh, he ain't playing in the preseason game, but we ain't got no more 
they didn't want to get nobody else hurt at D tackle. So it's like, hey, one of y'all got to play D tackle and play the whole game and play special teams the whole game. So I was like, let me do it. And I went there. I probably had a couple sacks. And then I, I was killing on special teams and I was playing D tackle. But I still got my some plays at defensive end and I played the whole game. <laughs> like, the whole You win it. You gas. Yeah, like they had to peel me off the field <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the You season. had to be gay. Like I've never been this tired before in my <laughs> life. And and but the crazy thing is, I actually thought I was gonna get cut, so I still found some energy to make it out that night. <laughs> I <went to> a <laughs> lot because it's like but people who don't know the CFL, it's like half and half. So you have Canadians, half Americans on your team. So like, you, you get to keep. You got to have twenty two America, twenty two Canadians dressed, and twenty Americans. You know what I mean on the team. So if you wasn't in that twenty, you wasn't. You wasn't no yeah. used to it. I didn't so know that. like, of course you got your veterans and your DBs and your corners. Those was primary, and then it's really probably it was like fifteen rookies playing for three spots. Basically, wow. and it was cut through like dog eat dog, man. Every day you wake up, yeah, you know I mean, you don't know if by the time you get to meeting, somebody gonna stop you in the hall, or yeah, you know I mean, they knock on your door at like four in the morning because the airport is an hour away and they gotta drive you because your flight is at eight o'clock. Like it's crazy. Like we stayed in a room, four beds, and, and four guys. Yeah, I mean, so we stayed in the big room for a bit, and every day somebody, and and you don't know if it's for you, if it's for the other dude. So it's a rotation. It's a rotation, and it was probably like for every day somebody knocked on my door, and I just remember like I kept my bags packed, and I was just like, all right, if I get cut now, I can still go back to my arena team because they're playing the championship. I can go make a couple of dollars. And uh, and it was just crazy. Like, I'm playing with guys from Oregon, Oregon State, yeah, Michigan. Like, my guy. roommate played at Oregon. He was like the he's like all time sack leader. Like one all time sack leader at Oregon. And my other guy played at Michigan. Another guy played at Washington State. They they got cut. The next guy played at, at Washington. And I'm like, I played at Wingate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I already know my time is coming. I'm from the, I'm from Richmond County too. Though. I'm from Richmond County. I, I mean, I only played five years of ball. These guys have been playing since they were six years old. Right. And and every day it was like every day was a like who what you gonna do? Yeah, I mean, it was a battle and and just to make it short because I know I'm going a little long with this. Good, brother. Like we had like I had to put in my mindset I wasn't tired. Like, I just played a whole arena season. My legs are shaking. I'm in the ice tub. I'm in the cold tub. If you know me, ice tubs ain't my thing. So, like, I'm doing everything I can just to make it. So, and so the last preseason game of the season, last preseason game of my rookie season, starting to tackle go down, whatever. Like, hey, you go going the whole game. You're like, no breaks. Don't look to the sideline. Nothing. I was like, let's do it. And you know what I mean? At the end of the at the end of training camp, probably wanna say like the last four days, I look around, I'm the only know. one in my room. I'm the only one in my room. You know what I mean? And it's just like it's a mentality. Like I don't care, like people wow. be like, Oh, you ran a, a four five forward, I ran a four two, like whatever, forty times, or you did this on bench, I did this on bench. <clears throat> Put that up. You know what I mean? I went to Wingate, I ain't go to I ain't go to Washington, I ain't go to UNC. I ain't go to Notre Dame. Put me, put me and, and them in the room. Yeah, you know I mean, like, like football. Oh, last one football is here. Yeah, and that's that was my mindset. Like my this dude who literally slept three feet from me played at Oregon. Another guy who's five feet from me played at Washington State. This other guy went to Michigan. Like Michigan. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, like these guys went to big big schools, and they be like, hey, where you went? And I, uh, I went to Wingate. <laughs> you know what what I mean? is it? <laughs> yeah. Hey, were you? And it's crazy. 
when you realized that you made a team, did you realize what had what, what you had just accomplished? At, at, at the time, no. I knew, I knew, like when I finished training camp, like when camp was over, it's like they bring all the rookies and you stand outside the GM door, and you it's real quick, boom, stamp, yes or no, give me a playbook. Yeah, you know I mean, in and out. And then the defensive end who played at, I think he played at Akron, another rookie. He went in, came out. He's like, his name is Deion Holtz. Like, I'll never forget, I'll never forget this day. And he's like, John, I, I got cut. Congrats to you, man. I was like, what do you mean? Like, first of all, shame on you for telling me my news. Let, let, let the GM tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my moment. Let him tell me. Yeah. And so, so I go into the GM office. I'm already like this. I already know, baby. <laughs> I'm big cheese. <laughs> I'm big cheese. And he's like, Bo, he's like, yeah, you know I mean, he's like, these guys went to Michigan, they went to Akron, they went here and then, but ain't none of them got what you got. And Ooh. he's like, you, I was 225, 230, and you willing Dude. to play a whole game at D tackle, and I'm getting double team, and I'm, yeah, you know I mean, this, and I play special team. Mm. And like he's like congratulations he said but he put me he's like i know you're tired but this go. like you can't stop you got to keep going go time. and just before we we end this my first game like one of the starting defensive ends he broke both of his thumbs in practice like game, I was only expected to play like five, ten plays a game. I'm it was like, your journey, yeah, brother. I'm gonna play all special teams. It's your journey, man. And I'm good. It was day two, week one of of regular season. This guy broke both of his thumbs. Thumbs. I'm next up. So I had to play the whole game at the end, all special teams, and I played five, eight plays on offense a game. For like jumbo package, big team. So like, I want to say the first couple games of my rookie year, I was playing like 90, 100, 100, 115 play. Like I was hurt. And this is again, this is coming off of playing the arena season. So how'd you yeah. how'd you do your first couple of games? How was your first game? What'd you my do? First, my first game, I think I had like three tackles, a fourth fumble. Um. I think I did all right. Like, of course I did all right because I would have never cut me after that. But like, I, like by the end, by like week, by week seven, week eight, I was done. Like, coach, coach could see it. Like every day was a fight because like I'm, I'm already, I'm like on week 30, 35 of playing football. Yeah, yeah. So my legs, like my energy, like I was there, like and I tried, like and that's why they didn't cut me. They didn't cut me because he knew he knew what what I was going through. He like he and that's what he loved about me. I got called the GM to this day. He's from North Carolina, Jim Pop, and and like he say like out of his top favorite five players he's ever signed. I'm in that top five. I mean, of course, because my career ended up the way it did, but just because my journey to get to my career, like the adversity I faced at the beginning, was crazy. And then to make it. So I ended up only playing like 11, 12 games in my rookie year because I was like, by the end of the season, I was, <laughs> I couldn't, like, I was done physically. Done. Now, well, hold on, okay. That team you were on, was that, like, was it a really good team you was on or like a mid tier team? Yeah. So uh, to my, in Montreal, in Canada? Yeah. No, we was great. Like, okay. we went to the Grey Cup. So Great Cup went to the championship. Montreal Alouettes went to the the Great Cup my my rookie year. Your first uh, year, my first year. I Ooh. mean, we lost, we lost, but but we went to it. And this you. is and this is the craziest thing about it. Like, I'm one of the only rookies playing. Like it was me and another dude, and the rest was like veteran players. So when I went to Wingate and I just only played like one season really at Richmond, I was the only freshmen to be on the team like the rest of the freshmen Richard every freshman Richard and maybe <laughs> one other guy didn't Richard but like I'm the only freshman playing it wasn't because I was better it's because yeah you know I mean they knew like it, it's just something about this dude so when I got to Montreal me and probably like 
uh, Clint Kent and Avon. So it's probably like three rookies that really played and was like a part of the team who really like got minutes or whatever, who wasn't just on special teams. And, and, and we, and that's what we did. Wow. Let me ask you a question. When was your, when was your breakout game where you was like, whew. Oh, that's it's easy. On, it's, it's a wrap from here. <laughs> it's over for you from here. I'm good. Um, Probably like my second year. So my 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 second year again. So they brought in another guy who played at like Michigan State, and it was like John. He had a decent rookie freshman, yeah, rookie year. But we don't do think you're ready to play. Yeah, yeah. So we brought in a guy from Michigan State, and he ain't do like he did. Limp, like he ain't do nothing. So I ain't played like the first four games of the year, and then like by game four, there's like I mean. They cut him or whatever, and it's like, Bo, hey, here, just Sorry. go, let's just go run around. And like, I'm playing against, and you guys know Marcus Allen, so we're playing against yeah. his brother, his brother Damon. His, his brother Damon was faster than him, and just like, he, he's a quarterback. This guy threw for 80,000 yards in the CFL and ran for like 12,000. Like, he, <laughs> he's, he's got like 100,000. Total yards. That's crazy. <laughs> crazy. That's crazy. And so, like, this is my first game playing, getting back in the and getting back to spin again. And but you uh, got rest though. You got a little bit of rest right now. Exactly. It's my second year. I knew what was happening. I'm rejuvenated, and I had two sacks. I had two sacks. I had four tackles. I got named player of the game, and this is like, this is 07, and I'm just like, I'm like, bro. I got like easy, and I ended up with like seven or eight sacks that year, and then and they just went on after that. You know what I mean? But like, I want to say by game that game of my second year, I didn't just like dominate, but I knew I could. Like, I knew I can compete. Like, I knew, yeah, you know I mean, I can handle this. But when, by the time I knew I was that dude, it was like uh, one game. I think my third year, I probably had like four or five sacks or something like that, and I was like, yeah. It, it was it was a <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was a wrap for a little bit. So, one question I I have to ask the question because people got it, kids need to know and want to know what kind of pay is it in the Canadian Football League? Like like what yeah, I mean it's, it's, we don't get millions. Like it's not like the NFL, but I can like I, I'm I live comfortably. Like I didn't I never stress over money. I think right now. The the least money you can make is like seventy five or eighty thousand, and then the max there's no max. So it's like some guys like one guy gets six hundred k or seven hundred k. Like we ain't making fifty sixty million dollars. Like this ain't the NFL. A lot of money for all. <laughs> but but again, like you, it's like and that's that's part of the thing where the sponsorships is beautiful too. There though, I'm sure exactly like and that was where I shine. Like I didn't <laughs> you know I mean I'm I play defensive the end. I'm not gonna make the six hundred K. Like I'm not I'm not getting the Q B money. But I was I was a good player and um you know I mean I'm marketable. Like I, I speak well, I'm sociable, uh yeah, you know I mean I I was a I was a community guy, so like I, I had I remember when Sean John was popping, yeah you know I mean this is like mid two thousands, this is when P. Diddy was still cool and Rock and Roll was cool. <laughs> I had the velour fits, and this lady see me walking down the street. She just happened to be a rep for John John, and we was in Canada. And she's like, "Listen, I'm looking for some big athletes. Yeah, you know I mean, you look good. Let me let me bring you up to my my assistant or my boss. See if we can get you a sponsorship deal." And like, I was one of the first people in the CFL who had a sponsorship, and I'm I'm rocking I'm rocking. I'm rocking Sean John every every Give day, baby. <laughs> you love it, love it, Sean John. Now, live it, Valor. Oh, Valor was. I had like 18 Valor fits. Yeah, it yeah. Was, it was the good times. It was, yeah. that was easy back then. I was a mean Valor bootleg king, boy. In Greensboro. Me Greensboro. too, boy. <laughs> Me too, boy. I, I had the fake Gucci the suit warrants. with all the G's on it. <laughs> the white horns? Oh, the, the academic, the academic joint? Yeah. 
But what's wrong with Velour? Like to this day, nobody can tell me what's wrong with Velour. Why did it go out of style? I don't know. It's the, the most comfortable material yeah. you've ever put on. Yes. Yo, you know, the they, ill, the the illest hip hop album know. cover is a man dressed in velour on Still Mad yo. Yeah. From head to toe. <laughs> From head to like, toe, velour like, out. Like uh, velour, if I found a velour fit now, like I'm for, first of all, I'm 41, 42 years old. I'ma buy it. Cause ain't okay, nobody I'm trying to be right. cool. Like what you gonna right. say to me? If I find a a, a two X or a one XL tall the lore outfit in the world, I'm getting it. Cosmos. <laughs> Cosmos. <laughs> hey, hey, pre yes. pre interview, this man said that the main thing he missed by the county is Mama Noya. I said everybody oh. Mama Noya, man. Mama Noya's is it though. Mama Noya's was the spot. This man have been all around the world in Canada, all his fancy French food. <laughs> I, I, I've lived. I've had he a great mama life. Know you. But the old, like when it comes to Richmond County, if I get one of them cheese steaks and the wings from Mama <laughs> Noise, I don't know what kind of honey mustard they had or whatever. <laughs> that was that was my combo. We should get a cheese steak ex, extra wet or whatever they call it, extra sauce on it. Oh, the Mama Noah yeah. sauce, the special sauce. Yeah. Ooh, come on, talk to me. <laughs> look at his face. Wait, he's really. <laughs> hey. Listen. When last time you been home, John? When last time you been, been to the long, county? It's been a long time, man. Like, I want to say like 08, 09. Dang. I saw your Fayetteville some years ago. I saw your Fayetteville some years ago. Uh, yeah, my Chuck brother, had a little brother, thing. So when my brother got stationed in Fayetteville, and he stayed, well, he didn't get stationed. So when he retired from the military, he got a, a, a after military job, lived in Fayetteville. And that's why I used to go like in the off season. I, 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 I mainly stayed in Canada. Like I ain't got no wife, no kids. So I was like, there's no point in me going to what, what I'm going home for. And I mean, the conversion rate was terrible. I was losing 25 <laughs> cents on the dollar. So I said, I'm gonna stay in Canada. But every, like I, I would, I would go, I would go hang out in Fayetteville for a little bit with my brother, uh, just to, just to get a little bit of North Carolina in me and, and see what's happening. And when actually when I retired uh, after COVID, was that twenty? I retired in twenty twenty one. Like I went, I moved to North Carolina for like six months, six seven months. Okay, in Fayetteville chilling. Didn't know. Okay, Didn't know that. Yeah. I was out there then too. Two six. Were you? Yeah, I was in favor then too, man. I was in favor from twenty uh twenty twenty to twenty twenty two. Yeah. Well I mean you wouldn't have seen me. I didn't I didn't leave I didn't walk out the house. Nah, didn't I, see you. I didn't leave no way either. I would have worked you came home. <laughs> Damn, baby. Yo, 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 this is how, how I was so and I know we jumping off subject. You are we'll, jump, we'll jump back in the foot. Your interview. <laughs> I was so sad at moving back and moving to Fayetteville. <laughs> I've, I've been to I've been to Paris, I've been to Marseille, I've been to Colombia. I mean, I've been to countries, Costa Rica, everywhere. And when when I retired, and it was like, oh, we can't we ain't gonna renew your your workers permit because you ain't working no more. And it was like you got to leave Canada. And I I actually cried like literally. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go back home. Like you know what I mean? So like the. When I first left, I'm, I'm, I went to North Carolina, dropped my stuff. My stuff is still in storage in North Carolina, and I went to I went to Florida for like six months, and I moved to, I moved to Fayetteville in like October 2021, and I didn't I did not leave the house. Like we went out for New Year's, and it was like I was like why, and it's <laughs> like it's, and no disrespect, no disrespect. But once you've lived, like once you've seen yeah. certain things in my head, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going backwards. I'm going yeah. backwards. So, and I know we're going a little forward. So that by the time that January came, I put my name. I was like, listen, I'm on the coach. <laughs> I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. But yeah. Uh how do you like coaching right now in comparison to football uh playing oh, the, the sport is it? my oh, bad oh, we could jump, Gail. tell the folks about your career man how many all-star games and great cup championships and <laughs> just just 
just give them an understanding of the, the heights you reached in the CFL. I mean, Hall of Famer should say it all, but, you know, give them a little. Yeah, I mean, like, so first, like, I want to start with college. I, I went to my college Hall of Fame, I want to say, in 2015. And then I think I still hold the record. I think I got, like, 25, 26 career sacks. And then I went to my conference Hall of Fame in 2017 for the sack. Yeah. Well, Hall of Fame was good. <laughs> I got him and got a couple of jackets. And then, so, yeah, I mean, wrapping up my career, I ended up playing 14 years. I played 14 years. I ended up with like 135 sacks, probably like 500 tackles, and um, 10 division all stars, like four league all-stars uh i think now i'm like six all time for sacks in the history of the league and just a couple of years ago last year i was the first i was i was like number 26 first ballot hall of famer so for people who don't know the cfl has actually been around longer than nfl i don't know how it works but the cfl is like 112 years the nfl is like 90 whatever years but I'm the 26th person to be a first battle Hall of Famer. So, and that was actually pretty cool. Celebrity in Canada, like, <laughs> like, like walking around, and, oh, look, look at John Bowman. Like, the, I mean, that happen a lot in, in Montreal for sure. And like, I'm not in the town I played in. So, and it, like, Canada's like big. It's actually coast to coast is bigger than the U.S. But, um, in my so in Montreal, I can't do nothing. Like whatever, wherever you go, but here is different. Like, unless like um, when we're around football, people know me. But when I'm just like going across the street to the grocery store, I'm just a big black guy with a funny accent. <laughs> Montreal, the team that you that you help. Yeah, Montreal. You... Montreal is that's my city. Like to this day, people want. I mean, that's my town. So. Yeah, but yeah. Gonna so, go back to the coach one day? I mean. I, or is that not right to ask right, right now? No, nah, nah, right now, I'm just <laughs> like, I love BC. The crazy thing is, like, Montreal is a great city. Like, the most festive city in the summertime. So, from like June to <clears throat> October, every day there's a fest. Every week there's a fest. The, the, the Caribbean festival, something to be in there's Montreal. Caribbean fest, jazz fest, comedy fest. Music fest, food fest, like every week is a festival or something. But like it get cold, it get (laughs) it get cold. It's like it gets the minus thirty in the winter. (laughs) But BC, where I'm at right now, like I I think it get thirty two. I think it get the coldest. Like we'll dip, we'll dip down, we'll dip down to zero. We'll dip down to freezing, but not too much, and it don't last too long. But I, I love BC, man. Just the 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 look of it, the town, the views, the everything is scenic, man. From, from highway to the coast is everything. Like right now, I look out my balcony. I got mountains in in. You know what I mean? Just off my balcony. It's, it's That's dope. dope, bro. That's dope, dog. What a life. John, man. man what, you know, just man. just just hearing your journey, man. Your life, man. I just want to say. You know, what I'm saying for someone who had the pleasure to uh, to to uh, play with you, for someone who has the pleasure, I remember reaching out to you when I was like in my football career, and you was like, "Wasn't Henson?" He's like, "Yo, just send me the film, yo, I got you." You know what I mean? Just <laughs> yeah. you know, what I'm saying just always being consistent, man. Like, dude, man, I'm extremely like fucking proud of you, bro. Like for real, man, yeah. extremely. And I'm, I'm nobody to say I'm proud of somebody, but I am, bro, for real. I'm, I'm I'm supposed supposed know, it. I was supposed to know that you know you're from Brooklyn. You can't find on live West Head Richmond County, but we <laughs> gonna claim you. Regardless. Listen, I'm I'm born in Brooklyn, but I'm from Richmond County. Yeah, you know we, we gonna claim you, man. And, and, and like I said, I didn't know to a few years ago the great things you've done. And when I found out, you know, I I spread the word. John Bowman, look him up. See, because I mean, in the day, man, kids need to see somebody that come from where they are at, get to certain levels, and know that it's, it, it's possible. So. If you give any words to somebody that at the high school now, a kid who's not starting, not the star, but you know, he, he got goals and aspirations, 
Just, just like you did. You can't be yeah. kind words for him, man. You know what I mean? The 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 main thing I and I say this to my players. I'm, I'm I've been getting in my third year coaching. Work, like at the end of the day, forty time is your forty time. Bench is your bench, but work it over it supersedes everything. If you working, if you showing that you working, or if you hustling, picking up a block, you know what I mean or showing up every day being present just being available if you work you will get noticed like my coach have sent me well my our scouts have sent me film to watch the players and i'm watching the film but i'm like hey who is this guy right here working like working <laughs> yeah i mean and, and they ain't the prettiest sometimes their, their their stance is is funny or their get off or whatever is slow but if you work yeah, I mean, I'm a back. I was a backup tight end. Yeah, I mean, I played Division Two football. I played Arena Two. I played indoor football league. Yeah, I mean, and I and I and I made it to where I did. And 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 I and I, the only thing I can say about my my career, about my accomplishments, is that from day one, from at Richmond Senior, Coach Intwistle was the tight end coach. Coach Intwistle and Coach Henson was the tight ends coaches. They can tell you if I ain't do nothing, I work, and sure. and that's the one thing I can carry with me at the end of the day. So, uh, for you young 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 high school guys out there, uh, junior high school guys out there that's listening or going to see this in the future, nothing does more than work. You know what I mean, like so if if you're working hard, somebody's gonna find you. Yeah, they say uh, what do they say uh. Uh, working hard beats talent when talent don't work hard, something like hard that. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Correct. And and, correct. That, and and the crazy thing is, you can develop skills. Like I, I didn't play until I mean, I had to develop how to play football to be a football player. I didn't come out the womb like you guys did. Like you guys are playing at Pee Wee, Pop Warner. And, Rockingham yeah. and Hamlet and LB and like all of these junior highs. I, I wish I, I was always too overweight. I can never <laughs> make the <this dog. laughs> yeah, So like, like I, did, I I had to develop how to play football. Like you learn, you can learn football skills. Like I I don't care what coaches say. Oh, you can't teach that. You can't teach this. Yeah, you can. You can't teach somebody how to work or how to be a tough effort. Yeah, I mean effort. How to be? How how mindset? My mindset. To the, like right now, I haven't played in five years. But if coach say, "Bo, go show him how to do it," I like my mindset now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out there and whoop somebody butt, and I probably won't. But my mindset <laughs> in, in my head, in my head, like that never leaves my head. I coach now. And I probably can't like I'm I don't run fast or I can't do a lot of stuff anymore. But my mindset is like, I don't give a damn what's happening. Like I'm gonna do it. And and that's the stuff you, you can't teach. Like that's what you wanna develop early. Like if you have that early, don't mat no matter what you end up doing, you're gonna be successful. In like life. in life, my like my career path, I didn't know I was gonna end up playing football, but I had a work ethic instilled in me at the beginning of my life that that said no matter what I was gonna do, I was gonna be good at. It. So it just so happened that I ended up being good at football, and that was my path. So again, for the young guys and women, for anybody out there, just work hard, and and the rest of the stuff will play out. You know what I mean, if you work hard. They'll find somewhere to put you. Yeah, I mean, you, they'll find somewhere to use you. Yeah, I mean, and and, and that's what. And if you need proof of that, that's me. Hey, so, hey, <laughs> your story, it's your dope, story is it's it's dope, bro. Movie. It could be a movie, brother. It could be, man. It could be a movie, brother. Um, one thing before we go, because we're getting a little late. Um, doing my research, I see that you were very impactful in your community during your your playing time. Tell the folks some things that you um done in the community when you was playing, man. Yeah, um, 
you know, and before before I tell them, I, I, even though I, I talk about it good, I really hate speaking about myself. Like I grew up in the hood in, in Brooklyn and it was like we had our Mike Tysons and and a lot of guys that I grew up boxing. And so I would see Mike Tyson and Mark Breland who won the gold, the junior the Olympics. And they would come talk to us, put us around the ring, have, slap the knee, tell the stories. So I always told myself, man, that's cool. If I'm going to live somewhere, I wish I could be that impactful and, and reach one, teach one. You know how they say. So like, I lived in Montreal all year round. So I want to be a pillar in my community like you, like you do. Like I want to show these kids because – no matter, like, Canada still got hood. <laughs> like, Canada, it got some hood parts, and it's hoods everywhere. Hood everywhere. Uh, hoods is everywhere. So I wanted to show these kids, and, and they speak French, so, like, whatever. And I wanted to show these kids, like, listen, I play football, but I care about you. Like, yeah, you know I mean, I don't, I don't care. Like, ain't no cameras around or whatever, whatever. I, I would still go do things like that. But during my time, I probably visited probably 600 high schools or whatever and done some stuff like donate shoes or basketball games and pick up football. Sometimes you just hang out and chill, like sit in the gym, chill, talk, you know what I mean, and do all of that stuff. Because at the end of the day, if they see me on TV and then they can see me in their school or walking down the street or at the grocery store, and they were like, oh, that's a good dude. Like, it's going to do two things. It's going to increase the popularity for my team, and it's going to entrench me into the neighborhoods. And my one of the lessons my my older player ahead of me said, Bo, is once you entrench yourself in the neighborhoods, they can't cut you. <laughs> <laughs> the, neighbor, the hood will have a revolt. Yeah. It's like yeah, you, make sure. the, you make the city love you, and they cut you, then we're they're great. going to be un, 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 on fire forever. Yeah. So it was it was it was it was a two part thing. But no, I really love talking to the youth, and and it's for me is is like teaching them something they didn't know, and then they get it. They're like you just rap into them, rap into them, and and it takes for a second, and then you just see the light turn on. They're like, oh, okay. And I'm dealing with kids where English, a lot of them English is their second language. So it, it like it just warms you up. I, I, we are everybody do it for different reasons. Do you speak like, French I, now? Je parle un petit peu de français. Okay, see. <laughs> yeah. Mais je je comprends plus que je parle. See? But I it, knew it. <laughs> it, it, it it's, it's like it's it's just fulfilling, and it sounds corny, but no, like when, when you read somebody and you teach them something, and you do it every day, so you know what I'm talking yeah, about. For sure. So it it, it it just means a lot. Great man, Kale. Man, nah, man, I just appreciate it, man. Um, <laughs> I, man, this has been dope, bro. For I real, appreciate man. That. You know what? I ain't gonna get off of here without thinking, y'all, man. I mean, because the, the the thing is about me in Richmond County, I didn't play a lot, and I didn't play long. I didn't go through the systems, the Rockingham's, and and then he started. But you went through them tour days, though. Yeah, yeah, I didn't go once you go through them tour days, but, it's, it's but forever I, rated, I bro. Wasn't, I wasn't a dude at <laughs> Richmond. I mean, I wasn't a star running back or star receiver or Michael Waddell who did everything. Or yeah, you know I mean, like so that's why people don't know who I am. So I appreciate you guys doing this platform and reconnecting the people from the past to the people to the new school era. Like we didn't have podcasts, we didn't have cell phones and technology right. when we were in high school. So this is a new thing, and, and and hats off to you guys for doing something positive from Richmond County, bringing us old geezers back to tell our story, <laughs> to hopefully <laughs> inspire somebody, you know what I mean? Because we, will, live, we live so that the next generation can, 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 be, can live a little bit. You know what I mean? Our stories is going to help somebody else, and, and that's why we do it. Well, Bowman, you might not think you're somebody to anybody, bro, but let me tell you something. You was that dude when we played, though. We knew who you were. We absolutely knew who you were, bro. I appreciate it. Man. Listen, man, we done had the, the, the everybody on, on, on this podcast, man. Like, this really has been a blessing for, for me and Kev to do this, man, because folks that we have interviewed and the stories we don't heard, man, 
it's, it's, it's inspiring, man. You know, like I said, it's more than football. The work ethic is is life. Like you gotta go get it, man. If you want it, you gotta work hard for it. You work for hard sure. for it. The money will come. Whatever you want will come when you put the work in. And watching your story on, it's, it's inspiring, man. Like I'm, I'm flabbergasted, man, because I know what a, what it takes to. Well, I don't know what it takes, but I can imagine the work it takes to become a first ballot Hall of Famer and be a Hall of Famer. Right. Thing, it's crazy. Man. That's not. That's not normal. That's, that's that's like exceeding uh like 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 superstar status being a hard it is. multiple things, man. And people don't know how hard it is to be to, to be make it all conference in college. It is very hard. Just just to make all conference <laughs> is extremely, you know, something we take for granted, but it is freaking hard, you know what I'm saying, to do that. You know what I mean? And then you a Hall of Famer in college and you're a Hall of Famer in and 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 uh for your school itself and then for the, the conference and then you're a Hall of Famer, man. Man, thanks for representing us well, bro. Please Hold hit on, me up when you get back in the States though. One yeah, time, my buddy. Yeah, for sure. Up, man. Up, man. <laughs> hey, John. If you ever catch me watching here, man, or the county, man, hit me up, man. Uh mama know it's on me. <laughs> or oh, oh, Dallas, or oh, Dallas, bro. If you come to Dallas, man, I got you, man. Please. Hey, you guys keep doing your thing. I appreciate you guys for having me. And uh, I mean, uh, once a Raider, always a Raider, man. Um, for sure, man. Much love, bro. Hey, hey, before you go, I'm the last thing. Um, the small segment where I post some pictures, and you tell me what was going on during those pictures. All right. And oh then boy. Gonna, let you out here. <laughs> but tell me what it means to you. Oh, okay. Let's All right. So the see. first we'll one is, is right here. Oh, boy. Who's so the guy the on the right hand side? First of all, I was getting held. <laughs> and this guy was probably, he was meat grabbing. Uh, but yeah, this is like, <laughs> the crazy thing this is probably like my second year playing defensive end. And this is like, 2001 2002 and i like again i was finding my way and i was beating people i got a better face mask than yeah. i had at richmond it was, and it was good yeah <laughs> all right let's go right here <laughs> chubby Here's face you say, look you know, at the number i was number 48, was 48. <laughs> that was disgusting <laughs> <laughs> No, but just looking at this picture, I was young, man. I was young. I still don't got no beard, but I had hair then. Hey, ball guys know it all, brother. You good? <laughs> Party cool. Oh, right here. I had just got my third sack of the game. This is a playoff game, and this dude, I was celebrating in his face. And you guys probably don't remember the, the, the quarterback play for the Dolphins, whose name was Cleo Lemon. And I sacked. I do remember Cleo times. Lemon. Yeah, and I sacked him three times, and and the center, this is their center. He got he got upset at the last bit of it. But well, you duck. What a perfect you, you time duck. for your helmet to come off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you duck. <laughs> you duck lipping. You duck lipping, Bowman, and you do look like somebody <laughs> from the cast of Empire. But you know, <laughs> Man, <laughs> you know they, me, still they, they caught me mid word. I was probably about to say kiss my butt. My they caught me mid word. <laughs> perfect so. time. You know, haircut was on point. Yeah, yeah. N no, no pimples. Per best time for your helmet to come off. Last one, man. Last one, man. That's that's the walk off. Yeah, I mean, sure after, after playing, like you said, after playing fourteen years and be, like being a Hall of Famer is tough, but being the first ballot Hall of Famer, being the one percent of the one percent, it is it, a grind. And you, get, and you gotta see, I was bald headed right here, so I was joining. Hey, the look, and ball guys flex, know it all. Got my speed flex now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, I <laughs> upgraded big time. <laughs> <laughs> and I had the handlebar mustache. That was crazy. All right. <laughs> Our last question, because I, I can go all night, man. Number seven. Number seven. Why was it number seven? Um, he want to see what did to the little print. No, I what that was one reason, but like my aunt, my aunt before she rest in peace, my aunt. Yeah, you know I mean she's my foundation. But one, her number was eight, so I always had an eight in every number. I was eight, oh. eight, 48, 58, whatever. Yeah. So I wanted to get eight. But the quarterback 
he was veteran, whatever. He was seven the year before, and he switched to eight. And I was like, Shh, I'll just take seven. And then he got cut the next year, and I was like, oh, let me switch eight. They was like, but you just had 12 sacks in seven, and you're starting to become, you know I mean, you a household you. name. You, they ain't even offer me a chance. They said, you're not getting eight. You're staying yeah. in seven. And, but it, 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 was, it was good. But it ain't bro, good don't fix it, baby. Work. Wow. Do they retire jerseys up there? They do, and I was told mine was going to get retired, but I seen somebody wearing it, and I was – Nothing to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't bro. That's funny. I ain't gonna lie, man. This has been one of my favorite interviews, man. Cause like I say, I know John from back in the day when they first moved down here and being in Pine Ridge and playing and you know and just sure. you know, we had we had the hoop back in Pine Ridge too, the little yeah, yeah, dirt court yeah. with the little basketball hoop on yeah. there too. But just man, it's it's just man. I, I am totally inspired, brother, man, and, and, and hearing your journey and seeing how far you came and went, man. I'm proud of you. I know I, I ain't nobody special, but I'm proud of you, brother, and, and and God bless you on your coaching, and maybe one day you may own the team. Let's put it out there. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't have that kind of hey, – I don't have that kind of – Hey, anything possible. Anything's possible. Anything's possible, anything is possible my man. Anything is possible. Hey, but yeah, he won the <laughs> I win the lottery, but – Listen, it, that's a that's a headache. <laughs> but no, again, before we close, I thank you guys for having me. You guys have had nothing but Richmond County legends on here, and just to think that I I fall in line with some of those guys, you know what I mean? I I appreciate you, you guys for even thinking about me and considering me. For sure, for sure. All right, brother man, God bless you, man. Don't be a stranger, man. Hit us up. Oh no, please, doubt. bro. Please sure. do. Dallas, I'm a, I'm gonna stop in Dallas. I'm gonna fly to Dallas and then go to uh, Richmond. Ain't got no airport. No, I I'll 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 no. I'll meet you in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll meet you in Dallas. <laughs> All right, brothers. All right, man. I'll bet you, man. All right, bro. God bless. Hey, Cam. Oh uh, man, what what a, what a what a yo. I can't. I think that might be one of our best interviews, bro. I ain't gonna lie. It, it, it might have been, bro. It really might have been, man. I it really, is, really, man. really just every week, man. What, what a story! But back up, what is, so resilient, man. Just resilience and mentality, and just just the resilience of it all, man. That's just beautiful, man. It's yeah, dope, bro. John, good people, in, man. Back up tight end, D two. Yeah. To, to, to the, the lower grade indoor team, Division two. Man. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It tells you about the will and the, and the strength and the will of a, uh, you know, say the will of a person, man. Where faith resides, sometimes you just got to believe in yourself when nobody else do, man. And that's just real, bro. Okay. And he believed in himself. He betted on him. I never knew how he got to Rockingham. So, so, so hearing that story, you know, and the aunt, the aunt the is the the, the star of the show. So the aunt is the star of the, the show, star bro. Of the show. Aunt Robin is yeah, the man. Hold on, my class there, man. Man, get them class on, Robin. I mean, even the brother retired from the military. So he's doing right. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Save the man. And it's beautiful, man. Bless is happy, man. Oh, it just it's just good to see the guy has his hands on his people too, man. So, you know, man, much love, man. Listen, brother. I mean everybody here, listen, man. Um Shirt action still open, baby. You need t shirts, come by and holler at me, man. Oh, what? We got and that restaurant, baby. Hey, we got a deal this month 10% off any order over $200. Stop by and see me. Um, talk to Rochelle, my wife, she's boss lady. Um, in the restaurant, uh, 415 Grill. We're planning on opening April 1st, 6 p.m. Let's get it. Um, breakfast. All right, so look forward to that menu. Being on your timeline, it can stop by supporters, man. All right, Kel. Man, Kel, love it. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you, you guys for two. Oh, my bad. Yeah, absolutely. Come purchase all over the place, right? And if there's anybody interested in employment, man, just send me your resume too, as well. So let's figure out a way to bless you, man. So for real, for real, man. It's a great job, man. I loved it, man. Today, man, I definitely appreciate John jumping on. And I appreciate you, Carter, man. I love what we're doing here, man. Thanks for being the glue to keep this thing together, man. Much death and most blessings to you, bro. 
Yeah, man. Let's uh, work on the next guest, man. Um, hey, Perry Williams, where you at, man? You dodging me, Perry Williams, Mike Thomas, Mike Thomas, Perry Williams. Y'all are two of Don't stop dodging. Hey, we Mike. We've had everybody on here. It's y'all turn, man. Come get these flowers. Let's go. We got something else cooking up. Don't forget rival series. We got some good rivalries cooking up. I promise Big you names. that. Big names. Big names. <laughs> Ball right, guys. guys know it all. Ball guys know it all, man. Be blessed, man. Mm-hmm. Have a good one. Peace. Y'all rich. Better go learn about your history. Go learn about it. 2008, we made history. Made history. Hey, championship. We done done that. Done done Remember that. being baller on the run back. On run back. Hey, Ellie with the set. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Sorry, stand back on his back. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Remember Baron Jones flipping in the touchdown. In the touchdown. Baron Green kicked the ball in the touchdown. Yeah, it's gone. Caleb Hood go deep. Caleb Hood go deep. Psych Bobby with the screen. Psych Bobby with the screen. Little Sire sit him with his juice. CJ coming, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Jaheen just got the ball, got the ball. Touchdown, we done ran the score up on y'all. Run it up. Oh, oh, A-A-I-I-E-E-R-R. Yeah, Richmond County. Seven state rings, that's on red. That's on red. Touchdown, one of the murders. I see you later. Touchdown. 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 Touchdown.